Hi, it's Ray Mills from Excel and VBA Craftsman. So, this video is not about a cute little calendar. This video is about developing at runtime and the benefits. This, uh, let's, let's just walk you through the calendar. So obviously, it highlights whatever we're pointing at. There's a reason. Um, anything with an underscore indicates that there, are, there is activity scheduled for that day. So on the 21st, it looks like we have some agenda, we have some activity scheduled. So let's go take a look. And sure enough, there are three new development program interviews. Oh, what a joy. Anyway, um, so those three days have uh, no agenda items because I just deleted that this second. Okay. So there's nothing scheduled for the 23rd. We see that, right? Okay, I'm going to add something. So let's go here. And what did we say we wanted to do the 23rd? So let's go to the 23rd. Boom. Oops. And let's go to the 23rd here. Now there should be some code in there that says, hey, the date is before, the end date is before the start date, which I have not added. But it doesn't matter because it's not relevant to this. Okay, so 23rd, we know luncheons tend to happen around 12. And then we're going to be making merry for an hour and a half, right? You know it's the holiday luncheon. And it's a meeting. It's at Fred's Pizza. We have the date scheduled. Then it's making merry, right? Oh, what a joy. Let's save the event. Okay, it's saved. Let's cancel. And if we go and refresh our calendar, we see that there is holiday luncheon scheduled. Okay, all pretty neat, right? Now, could you could imagine what it, putting these tiny little boxes in here and the amount of work that went on to create that form? But you'd be wrong. Okay, let me help you out here. So I'm going to drag across my. Uh, oops. Doesn't want to drag, let's drag it anyway. So let's get rough. Okay. So here's the code. Now you saw three forms. You saw the initial taskmaster form, which was that black box. And you saw the add item, which I picked the calendar date. And then the mini calendar, which is the calendars I picked the date for the 23rd. So there are three boxes, right? The interesting thing, you'll look at those boxes and you'll see there's nothing on them. Why? And the why is because I added all the controls at runtime. Now, those of you who are familiar with that, uh, going to say, yep, it's a great thing. But not only that, we hung some events off those created, those controls that we created. So it's a two-step process. Add the item, which is simple enough, and I'm going to walk you through one. And then hang on a uh, new class event, class, calendar class and the events. Okay, so let's just, let's focus on the, the black box that you see. See if I can drag this so you can see. Oh, you can't see it now. Okay, so I'm looking at it. Let's see if I can just reload it. If not, we'll just talk you through it. Uh, let's go here. And, and there it is. Okay. So we're talking, let's just worry about right now for now, just these frames. Yeah, they're frames. Because I picked frames because I like the mouse over event, which is available to frames, right? So that's your that's your choices. Anyway, and also inside each one of these little frames is a little box and that little box a little label I actually use that to color create the underlines now you can imagine if you could create it so that it when it goes through and looks at the date says it's vacation it can make it yellow or whatever you want so this bluish greenish just says there's events there right as we showed you so let's kill this now remember we're back at the, the taskmaster form and I could start with it being any color and just change it black control in the back color but I've got it, uh, the only thing I did do is set it up as black to start, right? This was the first one I built. So what I talked about going through. So we're going to worry about, oops, that's my elbow. We're going to worry about uh, just going through the, just going through the creation of the, of the, um, of the, those frames, those first 42 frames. So what I did was first, I created a frame object, the frame object, right? And I also created a frame array. There it is, right? Well, we'll get to that in a minute, okay? So let's go down. I'll take you through. So there's some declare variables, and we're using dates, obviously. I have a couple of dates in there, and I have those objects that we created, and I have a couple of counter variables, etc., etc., and miscellaneous items. So I have my, and 
the first thing I did was uh, hide bar ME is a bit of code that you can grab off the internet that just hides the you know the standard box standard um, standard uh, let's go to the taskmaster and I'll show you it gets rid of this and any all the framing and all that so it just makes it look a lot better okay simple enough right let's go back so I got rid of that and then I center it on the spreadsheet okay then I I set the size now I add now if you think about it when we went back to this guy the taskmaster it has uh, six columns of seven days right six six rows I'm sorry of seven days so that means there are 42 different frames added to create those frames, right? So here we go. Remember we created that object, a frame? And we add a frame to our, our form, right? But we do it 42 times, right? Now, we have to rename it appropriately, and we have to set the sizing appropriately, right? So the name is S miscellaneous, but we'd establish the name up here. So if we frame 1, 2, 3, 4, all up to 42, right? And then as it moves across, we have to set it up so it builds them, you know, it builds one, then builds one directly to the right of it, to the right of it, to the right of it. And we do that by incrementing the, the left function, right? And the same with the top. We have to move it down as we go through the five different, and we control that. Let me find it. Here we go. Control top, right? And control, this one's actually control top. And this one controls the, uh, one controls the top and one controls the movement across the right, okay? Because it's building down and across. Well, first across, then it jumps down and it moves again. Okay. It's really it's really setting the position correctly, right? And then remember, I said there's a little box within each one of those. Well, if you look here, we're adding it to the control that frame, right? We're adding it to the me, which means the form. And then we go to our little box. Oh, we're actually adding it to the frame that we've just created. A little tiny box that we can manipulate the color to say, yeah, there's activity or there isn't. So it's pretty cool. Then we go and add all the other controls. Now, this is a little bit of work that I do calculating the date, right? It's, it'll always pop up to start with from the current month, right? Which makes sense, like any calendar tool does. And then, you know, we go through and we format it appropriately, saying, you know, if it's the current day, make sure we shade it and a, a couple of things. Well, I should probably show you, right? So let's, oops. So let me show you. So what I'm talking about with the positioning, you see how we have one, two, three, four, five, six columns that we have to position, and seven set. I'm sorry, six rows we have to position, and seven columns. Now you notice that the months that are not the current month, slightly different color on the caption, right? And that's what we do. We're, we're highlighting it to say, yeah, this is the month of December. We always start with this calendar with Monday being the first day of the week, right? So pretty cool, right? So this was all built by, by, by runtime controls. Now, why is that important? Well, because precision. Do you think I could put those, you think I could put those neat little boxes, moving them, selecting them? It would be a real pain in the neck. And you know, you, you know you'd have hard time and adding these perfectly positioned and then, um, um, then going on and then saying, uh, then adding that little tiny box, it just be, it would be impossible. Look at the size of that box, that little tiny blue box in there. So this facilitates great control. Now that's one of the benefits, at least in my mind. And the second, the second benefit, I've tied events to this. Now, in an ordinary world, if I didn't know about building at runtime and, and hanging events off at, with, by creating a class, I would have to create this box and then I'd have to have a click event on the box, and it would be just a mess of code, right? It would be just tons and tons. Well, you'd have, well, what would you have? We have 42 different click events alone, and then mouse hover over events. So that'd be 84 events. Well, no. So let's go back to that class, and I'm just going to take you through the class. Right? So this part, form events, right, hangs, attaches, gives the form events, the same events as a frame, right? This is how it's getting its events, right? So that, now let's go down and find our frame event. Ah, oh, here we go. Now this is the mouse move, so this is essentially the hover, right? And here's a little bit of notes I put in to just so I can keep track of everything, right? So basically what this does is then goes through and says, let's see what I say, highlights the day you're pointing at and updates the agenda, et cetera, et cetera. So, 
this reacts, this code, that, just that one bit, little bit of code, I'm sorry, my elbow again. I have to work on that. <laughs> okay. So um, that event, the, the, the frame event, uh, mouse, mouse move, is that controls all that highlighting, right? And it's really not that complicated. It, it's, a bit of, it's a bit of work, and here we are. So when we highlight one, we have to unhighlight the others, right? So that's how that works, right? And the arrow events are when we click those up and down arrows that say, okay, move back one month, forward one month, pretty neat, right? Very neat, I think. So all this, and there, there really isn't a tremendous amount of code. Now, look, let's just talk about back to the frame event again. So this is when we hang over that. But this would be, to create this, I would have to, without using, without using the uh, runtime and attaching the event, I essentially have created a, a, a one-stop shop for all those hover events. Otherwise, you'd have to have, as I said, those 42 separate hover events calling some program, right? So it's so neat and very powerful. So, so I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that there are two things that, that uh, one sees in, in, in programming VBA. One, if you, don't, um, if you don't, if you continue to travel to, the first thing is stop traveling to you know, manipulate cells, refer to them. It, uh, the machine doesn't care. It has it all in memory. Going to the cell to manipulate it is a human need, not the machine's need. And once you give that up, your code's going to be faster and better, etc. The second thing is programming at runtime allows you to do much more complicated and much more powerful, uh, and using class events, much, much more powerful and uh, really a lot of fun. So, um, I'm going to have it out on my website in a few days, and I, I think you're going to really, uh, I'll detail it all, it, and, uh, and I think you're really going to enjoy it if you pop it up, and uh, I'll share my code, of course. So uh, this is Ray with uh, Excel and VBA Craftsman, and uh, hope you have a great day. Thanks.